For dinner tonight, we are making a ricotta chicken. This looks so delicious. I love all of these flavors. Before we even do anything else though, we need to go ahead and preheat the oven to 425 degrees. I'm actually gonna start by cutting up some baby spinach and it just needs a rough chop really. So in this bowl, we have about one cup of chopped spinach and to that we are gonna add about one cup of ricotta. We are going to add about a half cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. So again, you guys know, I don't measure a whole lot. We're just eyeballing it. And we're just starting to incorporate. This is all gonna get mixed together. I do wanna add in some minced garlic. So we have some of that. About a clove is what I'm going for here. And then personally, I like to toss in a little bit of onion powder. I just feel like the flavor is so good. So let's add about a half teaspoon. And even though we've already added minced garlic, I am gonna toss in about a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Same thing. And Italian seasoning, seasoning is another one. You gotta have some of that in here. We're gonna add about a teaspoon. So a little bit more of this one. And then this next one we're gonna be really conservative with. This is red pepper flakes and it's so delicious, but they're very spicy. So we're going easy on that one. That's maybe a fourth teaspoon. Let's just get all of this mixed together. Okay, we wanna make sure that it is well combined. We wanna make sure all of those flavors are gonna be mixed in there together. I think that's good. Let's set that to the side. Okay, you guys know I prefer to make up my own marinara. And one thing that I learned recently is you can actually mix it up straight here in the can if it's something that you're gonna be baking. So in this case, we are going to be. So I'm gonna add a little bit of minced garlic right here into the can. I know this is so weird, but I'm just saving a dish, okay? I don't have to clean another dish. And again, I'm gonna add a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of Italian seasoning. Start the mixing process. Okay, now for me, I like to add a little bit of Worcestershire, maybe half teaspoon-ish. Mix that in and a little bit of sugar. That is a teaspoon. There we go. It's all right here, it's so easy to do. I know that's a little bit odd, but it is really easy like that. Now, if you guys have been here for a while, you know that I prefer to cut my chicken breasts in half to make them a little thinner. You can pound them out if that's something that you prefer, but I just usually will cut them in half. I also usually will cut off any fatty pieces if I see them. I don't like it. Sometimes they'll come out perfectly uh, fine, perfectly even. Sometimes one is smaller than the other and I don't mind it too much because honestly, the kids don't want quite as large of a piece as my husband and I do anyway. So it ends up working out just fine. So I'm not super careful about that. But you do, you wanna be at least close though because of cooking times and everything cooking evenly. Okay, so now we have four pieces. Let me push this to the side and wash my hands. All right, so I have a nine by 13 dish. We're gonna spray it. Which by the way, if you have not tried the spray from Thrive Market, it is the best sprayer on any spray can that I found thus far. Okay, this one, it's called Expeller Pressed. I don't know if that's what makes the difference, but y'all, it, it comes out perfectly. I should probably should have laid the chicken in the dish before washing my hands, because now I'm gonna have to do it again, but that's okay. Okay, so we'll lay it in here. Mm, let's flip that around. Okay, wash again. Now, before we add in our spinach and ricotta mixture, I am going to coat or add some salt and pepper. Always add from up high. That way you're not gonna get big clumps of salt. We wanna make sure this has good flavor, especially since we didn't add any salt into the uh, ricotta mixture. Okay, now that we have seasoning, we're going to take the ricotta mixture and it's gonna go all over the top of our chicken. The oven is preheated. So this is perfect timing because this is gonna go in in just a minute. 
take that um, ricotta mixture and just kind of spread it around a little bit. Another thing that you could do if you really wanna take the time, instead of cutting these chicken breasts in half, don't slice them all the way through and you could stuff them with this ricotta mixture. Honestly, this is so easy to just lay it on the top so it's completely up to you, but that actually looks really beautiful too, is a stuffed chicken breast. So that's another way that you could go about it. Also, I've heard a couple of comments from you guys recently about you love when I'm doing something that I'll give tips for substitutions or a different way to approach things. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying that. Let me know if you are one of the people that seems to enjoy that because I feel like each time I each time I make a recipe, we adjust it in some way. So the next time we make it, we've probably done it a different way before. Now we're gonna take the marinara-ish sauce and we're gonna pour, actually I don't even need the spoon. We're just gonna pour the marinara all over the top. While this is in the oven, it's gonna go in for 18 to 20 minutes or so. We're gonna pull this out at about 16 minutes and we're gonna add some more of that Parmesan cheese to the top so that it can bake on there. It's gonna be so delicious. But while this is in there, remember it's at 425. We're gonna set a timer. We are gonna make some spaghetti noodles to put this over. All right, so there's the 16 minute timer. Let's pull this out of the oven and we're gonna add that Parmesan cheese to the top and then it can go back in. I'm gonna add one more step just because I feel like it looks pretty as the cheese melts. We're gonna take a little bit more Italian seasoning and just add it to the cheese here. Point, this is gonna go back in for about four more minutes or so. Doesn't this look so pretty? I cannot wait to dive into this. My family's flavor, my family's favorite flavors is red are red sauce. They love marinara, they love spaghetti, lasagna, all that kind of stuff. So they are going to love this one. Before I serve up all the other plates, let me try a little bite of mine. Looks like the cook time is good. This is so delicious. I mean, guys, this took me minutes to make. It was so easy. It is very good. Everyone in my family is going to love this one so much. I, I wish I had made more because I feel like this actually would be really good reheated too, like pop it in the air fryer tomorrow for lunch. Guys, this is so easy and so good. All right guys, tonight we are making a 30 minute meal. I'm starting with my Dutch oven in here. I've got one pound of ground beef and we're just going to cook this up start to get this cooking in here. You can cook this in a skillet if that's what you prefer, but the you want a pot with a lid. You guys really seem to like one pot meals, which is fantastic. This is one of those, but it's also a 30 minute meal, which makes it even better. So it is a double whammy. So this is also a pretty lean ground beef, so we're really not gonna end up with a lot of fat or grease there, but I will take a paper towel and just soak up the little bit that's there. Okay, so you can just take a paper towel, fold it, and then just kind of let that soak it up, then get, grab your tongs or something like that to pull out the paper towel. Okay, so now we're gonna put about three to four cloves of garlic in here and just let that cook for a minute or two. I am taking some red pepper flakes, just about a half tea, a quarter teaspoon. You really don't need much at all. And sprinkling that in, I'm gonna let that cook as well. And we'll just start to let this all saute together. We also wanna add some Italian seasoning. I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of this as well. Add as much or as little as you like. I probably could have used my smaller pot to make this, but I had just finished washing this one, so it was conveniently there. Okay, so I have in this measuring cup here, one cup of orzo. We're gonna pour all of that in. Just let it toast for a minute. Okay, so we're on medium high heat right now. We are going to add an entire can of tomato sauce. This is a 15 ounce can. Okay. 
I am also using this beef bone broth and we want to add about three fourths of a cup of that. Okay, so that's three fourths. It smells really good in here right now. I've also got some heavy cream. We are going to add one cup of heavy cream. I'm just using my same measuring cup here. Now we're just mixing it together. And we do want this to bubble slightly, so it doesn't have to come to this rolling boil, but you do want it to be kind of like a low boil. We have it on a medium right now. I'm gonna keep it on medium until we get to that low boil. Then I'll probably end up turning it down more to like a medium low. It's gonna simmer for about 10 minutes. You do want to come over and stir this pretty frequently though, just so the orzo doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. Oh, about 10 minutes. Let me go ahead and set a timer for that. Oh my goodness, you guys, I realized I forgot to add in the Worcestershire. We need to add in a teaspoon of Worcestershire. So just add that in. It's totally fine because it's been literally 30 seconds since I set the timer. But yeah, don't forget that is an ingredient that we're adding. Okay, you can start to see a very low little boil here. So I'm making sure to give it a stir, but that's what we're looking for. We really just want it to be consistent. Okay guys, the timer just went off. I'm gonna give it another stir. So in that 10 minute period, I stirred it, let's, I think it was probably about three times. And each time you could definitely feel it, feel it start to stick at the bottom. So just so you guys are aware, the numbers on my stove go from low up to about six. So, and I currently have it on two and a half. So it's still pretty low right now. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn the heat all the way off. We don't need it on at all anymore. I've got a little bit of Parmesan cheese. I do wish that I had more because, well, I mean, you need about a half cup. I probably have a fourth cup of Parmesan cheese, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and dump that whole thing in. Okay, also we are going to add in some baby spinach. I'm not gonna take the stems off mine. <laughs> you feel free to do that. You guys, if you've been here for a while, you know why I'm laughing because apparently there is a lot of, um, very strong feelings about whether or not you should take the stems off of your spinach. Feel free to do that. Cut the, the stems off if you want to, okay? So we're stirring in the spinach and I'm gonna put a lid on this and just let it sit for three to five minutes and then it's gonna be ready to eat, okay? So just pop a lid on and then we'll be ready. All right, friends, after tasting it, I'm just gonna add a touch of salt. It doesn't need much, just a little bit, maybe a half teaspoon or so. Okay, now stir that together and it's ready to serve. We are ready for dinner. Look at this, super easy dinner, really tasty. I mean, it's just like a creamy tomato pasta, but it's not your typical pasta, it's your orzo pasta. But if you don't have orzo, you could definitely make this with another type of pasta, but it's very good. It's perfect for tonight, especially since it's cold and rainy. I actually made this dinner the other night and I decided to not film it right beforehand. I just wanted a night where I could throw together a quick dinner and I was so disappointed that I didn't film it because it was so delicious. So we're remaking it again tonight. That's how much we liked it. Like three nights later, we're having it again, okay? This is a sheet pan ginger soy glazed trout. You can use salmon if you want to though. We are actually using trout because trout is a little less expensive than salmon, so we're getting a little bit more value. But let's go ahead and start prepping all of the vegetables. The last time I made this, I didn't use these little potatoes, but we love them. So we're gonna add some in, okay? So with these, I'm actually just going to quarter them but you would just do, you know, use whatever potatoes you wanna use and then just cut them to the size that you need. So you also want a bowl handy so that you can just throw everything into that bowl. We're gonna to be tossing everything in some olive oil and some salt and pepper. You could use coconut oil or whatever type of oil you like. 
I can't remember if I used coconut oil last time. I think it was olive oil. So that's what we're gonna go with. For the green beans, I'm not gonna use this whole bag. Cut some of these in half. You don't even have to use green beans. Um, you could, Brussels sprouts would be really delicious with this if you like Brussels sprouts. But I do wanna add a little bit of green in here. So we're going for about half the bag. And we'll do a couple of carrots. Um, yes, I do have a five pound bag of carrots because we eat a ton of them. So you guys know if you've been here for a little while that we love color. If these are not your favorite vegetables, use whatever vegetables you like on the sheet pan. I mean, I feel like that's pretty standard across the board with any recipes that I do, but just use the stuff that you love. If you don't like it, you're not gonna eat it anyway, and you're, you're not gonna love it in the same way that we do. So use the things that your family enjoys. And the thing about vegetables like this is even if we don't eat them tonight, then I have leftovers for lunch tomorrow, and I'm not hating that. Last time I did these, I did it with salt and pepper, and I just realized that we're out of pepper, so I'm just gonna use a seasoning blend that we like. Feel free to use salt and pepper. It was delicious that way, okay? So we're just going to drizzle with some olive oil, and I like to do this twice just to make sure I get a nice coating. So I'm gonna sprinkle with seasoning, and we're gonna mix, then drizzle, sprinkle, mix again. Oh, see, we got flying vegetables. Could have used a tad larger bowl, but you know, here on Feeding the Birds, that's pretty standard that when I'm mixing something, I say probably should have used a larger bowl. All right, another little drizzle, and another little shake, and another little mix. We're getting seasoning on each one, olive oil on each one. They're gonna be nicely coated. This is such a colorful dish. I don't know if I said in the beginning, but my oven is currently preheating to 400 degrees. We picked this up at Sam's Club. It is a trout instead of a salmon. So this one right here is 1.63 pounds and it was $14. Roughly the same size salmon was about $23. So definitely savings. Um, and trout is delicious if you haven't tried it before. Okay, so it is a skin on, so we take the whole thing out and just lay it on the sheet pan. Now we're just gonna take our vegetables and they're gonna go all along the outside of the fish. Spread it out a little bit. And we need to make the sauce that's gonna go on the top of the trout. This is the money part right here, you guys. We have a bowl to make our sauce in. So for this, I'm using coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. You guys know we typically do that, but we need about a fourth cup. Oh, that did not have one of the shaker tops on it. <laughs> Add about two tablespoons of this organic sweet chili sauce. I picked this up at Whole Foods. This is something we actually have on hand at all times because I think it's delicious added to any type of ginger or Asian inspired dish. So we're adding about two tablespoons. I'm not measuring, this is completely just eyeballing it. And that is okay for something like this. We do need to add about a tablespoon of honey. And you guys know I always keep this on hand. This is a ginger paste instead of grating my own ginger, which is very easy to do, but this is easy to just keep in the refrigerator. So for this, we need about a tablespoon, but we love ginger, so I typically go a little more than the recipes call for. Add some minced garlic. We need about two cloves. Okay, now last time I didn't do this, but this time at the grocery store, I picked up green onion. The recipe does call for it. Chop it up, and then this will be really nice in this sauce. I do wanna add a little bit of white. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop that up as well. You might be curious, if you've been here for a while, you know that we typically do not add onions to our recipes because my husband does not like onions. But for some reason, he doesn't mind green onions. So we needed a tablespoon. This is probably a little more than a tablespoon, but that's okay. Mix all of this together and then just drizzle it. Obviously, it's totally okay if some of it gets on the vegetables because it's just so good. 
Now this really does not take a long time at all. This is gonna go in the oven for about 20 minutes. We'll check and see if it's done at that point. And then we're gonna broil it and cook for another two or three. And that's just gonna crisp up the top. This is not salmon, um, trout. You're gonna crisp up the top and it's gonna be so, I'm telling you guys, it's so good. I'm gonna reserve just a little bit in my bowl because right before I put it on the broil function, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the top. So. I already told you guys that this was delicious but I'm gonna try it for you anyway so I can just prove again that it's delicious. It's perfect. We did end up cooking it just a little bit longer, so about 25 minutes or so. Another thing that you could do is cook your vegetables for about 10 minutes first, then add the trout or the salmon to the sheet pan and cook it for an additional 15 or so, but the cook is perfect and you get that ginger flavor, you get that um, honey flavor, so good. Our verse today comes from Colossians 3.2. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you need more dinner inspiration, there's an endless supply of videos, all different kinds of dinners, meals, breakfasts, snacks, all the things that you would want. Check out the link above and you're gonna get more inspiration there.